welcome back to Cookies Fish Room. My name is Norm. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, today I'll be talking to you about epistylus, a really relatively not well-known disease. Uh, before I start, thank you to those who've subscribed to the channel. If you have not yet, please do so. It's only, the information is only there to help you guys. And the best way to know that we're putting out a new video is to hit the notification bell. So before I start, yes, I did chop the locks. Going back to pre-COVID hair, no more long hair, uh, no more looking like a bogan. If you don't like the, me with the short hair, please say so in the comments. Um, anyways, it's a look that uh, I don't think anybody on YouTube has seen with me before. So today, epistylus, let's talk about this disease. It is, what is it? Opportunistic feeder. Where do you find it? It doesn't need the fish to survive. It's only on the fish to basically get food. It holds on to it because it feeds from the water column. It's an opportunistic feeder. They're relatively tiny. Um, grouped together, they look like patches gray, usually in color, a light gray, and sometimes see through. The, the actual surface of it is lumpy, but smooth in texture, not to be mistaken with a fungal disease where you get the furry look and the individual um, little hairs, you could say, <laughs> to do with fungal, if that's one way you, you want to describe it. Um, yeah, the really scientific words here. So um, the other thing is it often does get mixed up with ick. And how does it differentiate from ick? Well, ick, you could say, look like little grains of salt and they are individually on the fish. Where with, like I said earlier, epistolus, it is a patch. So you might think to yourself, hang on a sec, that does sound familiar, Whoa, patches. Uh, what other disease have patches that are on the fish? Columnaris, unfortunately. No, it's not columnaris, but it does associate with it a hell of a lot. And I mean a lot. So um, if your fish has uh, epistylus, it usually, there's a good chance, you know, columnaris, the bacterial infection is on the way with it. So one way to tell, and the best, biggest way is not to look for the, the patches because that's already there with the epistylus, so you will never know if your fish does have columnaris, but is to check the gills. If the gills are red, um, you've got problems. Grab the sulfur straight away. Like I said, sulfurplex in the other video. Um, if you can't get sulfurplex, try sulfur, blue planet, uh, blue planet, that is, if you're an Aussie. Uh, anywhere else in the world, you can use API, triple sulfur, or at the same time, they're all the same. They all work great, no issues with them. Grab whatever you can get. So, um, it does, like I said earlier, it gets mistaken for ick a hell of a lot. People spend time with ick treatments and it doesn't get anywhere. The only thing that happens is you prolong how, how, how much the fish has to deal with this disease. It's not pleasant and they can suffer, their immune system suffer, stress brings on again colnaris. So you try to avoid that as much as you can and diagnose it if you can right the first time. So in Cookies Fish Room, we do our best to help you diagnose these diseases, illnesses as best as we can. But remember, we're human, we do make mistakes, we can't guarantee everything we do. Um, sometimes things present themselves as what they're not. So um, just, you know, don't be too harsh on us, give us a break. We do our best to, to give you guys all the help that we can give. We do it out of our own time and Please don't get nasty if we do get something wrong, which hopefully doesn't happen too often. I only say this because I've had a couple of cases this week where people have got nasty with me and I had to mention what I just said, unfortunately. So back to it. Yes, um, we do our best to make sure we can diagnose this disease the right, uh, right the first time. And we've had a few instances this week where we've had threads put up where people have been dealing or treating for ick and it has not come good. Um, there is a, a different treatment that's required. With ick, high temperature will cause the ick to fall off. In this case, a high temperature, just like with columnaris, will make this worse. So best to do is to treat it like you're treating columnaris, low temperature. 
it is very, very um, anti uh, salt. Um, so the treatment is not too, not too difficult with this one. Um, salt you need to either give baths. Um, I prefer to use Epsom salt. The two aquatic vets that I had a meeting with about this this morning were adamant that you can add uh, salt, aquarium salt. So be careful with the two salts, all right? So the best way to treat this is one. I'll be straightforward so we don't, um, this part of it is not a discussion. This is straight what you have to do to treat this disease. One, add aquarium salt to your tank. Two, lower the temperature. If you're using Celsius, don't ask me what Fahrenheit is, I'm an Aussie. So it's Celsius, lower it very, very slowly, over a day if you can, to 23 degrees Celsius and no lower. No lower than that, it's not necessary unless you're dealing with a cold water fish. I am talking about tropical fish and fish that are highly susceptible to it seem to be the tropical range at this stage. So um, lower your temperature to 23 degrees Celsius. If you do have a cold water fish, don't worry about it, you're right there. So 23 degrees Celsius. Number three, Epsom salt baths. Now, three times a day, lasting maximum of five to 10 minutes each, and make sure you're using water from your fish tank so the parameters match. And the last thing you wanna do is grab some antibiotics as soon as you can. Now, there's a range that you can use. I prefer two, Marison two or Amoxicillin. You may have to speak to a vet depending on which country you are from. So, of course, check out the local laws first and um, depending on where you are, you can buy this stuff online. Very easy to treat. I do recommend no more than a 10 day course at a time. And usually that will get rid of it if it is um, epistolis. If it doesn't go away, you're most likely dealing with colonaris, unfortunately, at that point in time. You go to the colonaris video and follow the instructions on there. Now, uh, there's not too much to cover with this topic, so I'll, I'll keep it brief and not too confusing. You may think, where, do, where does my fish get this? It is uh, uh, something that comes into the water that can be basically quarantined for if you put salt once again in your quarantine process. Watch our video, it's all in there. We do have salt in our process and we do have Marison too, so it should cover it. If you follow our quarantine process, you won't, I won't say you won't, but you shouldn't have an issue with this at all. Um, where is this found in the tank? Like I said, it doesn't require the fish to live. It can be sometimes found in the water column on plants and majority of the time, if your tank isn't that clean, it is found in the mold at the bottom of the tank. So uh, what I recommend is to not to keep your mold in there for too long. The column feeders do are great um, in the tank for your nitrates, but the problem is that it does breed these, oh, I'd like to call them parasites, but they're not really parasites. They're just op they're just organisms, you could say. They live just like anything else. So remember, the quarantine process is the most important thing in the hobby. If you don't do this quarantine process, you've lost the race halfway. Quarantine and make sure that you don't have to deal with these things later on down the track. We have a video for quarantine. If you don't know where it is, hit me up and I will link it to you personally. Thank you to those who have joined in the competition once again. Um, big shout out to all our sponsors. Thank you for our subscribers. Join us on Facebook if you haven't yet. Cookies Fish Room, easy to find. Instagram, hit the like button if you like the video. Um, not so much my haircut. And thank you again to everybody who has joined us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Hopefully that's actually cleared up some misconceptions about ick and why all ick treatments don't work. And another thing I forgot to mention, this is found on catfish a hell of a lot. And remember, salt is the only way to fix this. And yes, it is safe for catfish as you've seen in my other video. Forget about the misconceptions about 
salt being bad for catfish, being bad for snails. Salt is the best thing you can put into your tank at the right level, unless you OD on it. Okay, once again, Norm, Chu, say goodbye. Have a good night, good day, wherever you are. If you're an Aussie, keep cool, enjoy the beach. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, well, stay warm. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.